Merlin is currently my main spirit guide. Now, when he came to me, he um, and I was rude enough to ask his name because we all want to know what our spirit guides are called. And he announced himself as Merlin, and I said, "Don't be ridiculous! I'm not. I'm not working with anybody that purports to be Merlin. I don't even believe in you." Um, and he was very, very patient, and we spent some time actually having conversation where we, I was, <laughs> he was being patient with me, and. Um, I was trying to work out how I would ass assimilate, sort of work with him um, in terms of, I couldn't call an energy, a personality Merlin because I didn't believe in it. Um, and so, but I thought, okay, well, let's, you know, let's go with this because at this stage in my life, various other things had been happening. Um, and it had, I had wanted a spirit guide to work closely with on this sort of level. Um, and he was certainly filling that role. So we decided to use his original Welsh name, which was Merthen, right? So it's like Carmarthen, but Merthen. So I end up with saying Merthen. Now, of course, what I did there was create um, a spirit guide name for myself that actually gave me more problems because not only could I not say it, but also in writing it in blogs and things, people said, well, how do you say that? What is that? How do you say that? How do you pronounce this? So actually it's become a lot easier to say, well, actually my spirit guide is Merlin um, and everybody knows Merlin. Does Merlin have a, a personality? Sure, yeah. What's that like? But not in a... Um, it's sort of not like... A, a, it's, it, it's not the sort of aspects of personality that I would ever attribute to a person that I've ever met because I think I said earlier on that he comes with a feeling of nature. And what I mean by that is that there's a, a rough, uh, wild energy to him that you can find in nature you stand outside in a landscape and uh particularly you know in the in the less um shall we say um, what uh, tame uh, less farmed uh, areas of england or europe um in these wilder places and you get that similar feeling of natural energy that has a creative force that has a knowing that has a wisdom to it even in a landscape and when I used to see him when he first used to to come to me arrive here um, I would picture him and there would be aspects of uh, he would be alive with animals and and crawl you know crawling things amongst him which actually was it sounds a bit kind of like oh that sounds awful it sounds scary and actually in a way uh, it wasn't scary but there was a um, a massive amount of gravitas of, of seriousness of um this is important my you know you don't muck about with me that kind of feeling um he that is what he arrived with which is probably just as well because i've tended to always be quite um uh uh, uh, not cheeky, but I don't take well to authority. I've never responded well to authority. Um, and so if, if, a, if a guide was going to work with me, then they would have to be pretty damn serious for me to actually take them seriously. Um, and yeah, I do respect him hugely because uh, I've had several conversations with him. Um, and he's fine with, the, uh, with the, the relationship that we have now finally got. These days, most of my contact with my spirit guide, with Merlin, is through conversation. And I am asking his opinion and I am asking his for his input, okay? There are other times where, as I said before, he will simply speak through me and those are, I have no influence on that whatsoever. So if I do a workshop for somebody, or even sometimes when I'm doing a video for the YouTube stuff, I can feel his presence and his presence always comes from this side, from the right hand side and there's a tingling presence and it comes through and these days because I've practiced with him and this is our agreement, he, that energy comes and sits in here and then he is talking and I'm basically taking a back seat, listening to what is being said and very often I'm thinking, oh, that's really interesting. So, um, or I'm thinking, why is he saying that? Um, but it's, a, it's, a sec you know, it's another party. That's a very different thing to me having a conversation with him. And that's a very specific thing. So he needs, he wishes to address an individual or he wishes to address a, a group of people with specific information. When Merlin does speak through you, is it a different voice? No. Hear, 
voice. No. It's still Tim's voice. It's my voice. And uh, many people won't even notice the difference. But those that have been more, uh, in, in, more uh, immersed in spiritual activity, so in spiritualist churches, or they've, they've worked closely with their own guides, they have said that they see a difference. They see a difference in the, my eyes and in the, the, the feeling that is emanating from me. Um, and I have, in fact, in a recent workshop I was on, um, there were some ladies on that who um, didn't know my history, didn't know my background, didn't know really anything about me. And they were going to tell me that um, that I had Merlin with me because um, they didn't realise that I knew uh, that, that I had Merlin as a spirit guide. You see, they knew that little about me. Um, and he had been talking... Uh, talking through me and so they were they were excited to tell me that oh did you know you've got Merlin with you and it's like yeah <laughs> I did <laughs> so but you know um when he comes through usually he's he's very uh he, he I was gonna say he doesn't take prisoners but I mean he's not unpleasant at all in any way whatsoever he's um he's but he's quite direct uh because he's got things to say do you feel that you've known Merlin for a very long time in some sense that's a, that's a, that is a really good question because um, my honest answer is no, I don't. And um, that I, I feel as though I should say yes, but I don't say yes because my the honest answer is no, I don't. And but do you know what? I equally say to you know. To, 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 do I feel as though I've known Nikki, my wife, for a very long time, like longer than the 30 or 40, 30 odd years that we've known each other in this life? Well, I certainly feel more that I've known her for longer and, and generation upon generation or lifetime after lifetime, more than I feel that I've known this intangible character. But Merlin has insisted that we have known each other for many, many for a long, long time, and actually, we've had this agreement that he, we would be working like this um, before, before I came down for this life, as it were, right? So, but I don't remember any of that. I, I can't buy into it, that as a concept, except that I do trust this energy that is Merlin. And one of the reasons I trust it implicitly is that I've had experience of, uh, I've put the time in, you know, this working with a spirit guide. Uh, as anybody that has worked with a spirit guide to any depth uh, will understand, it's not something you just say, oh, OK, I've got a spirit guide, I'll, I'll, OK, what are we going to do? Uh, it, it takes time to develop a close relationship in which you both trust each other and are able to work and allow it to flow. I believe there's an ultimate creator. I believe there's something somewhere, some, not, no, I'm not going to say somebody, but something somewhere that started but again you know i don't think that i don't think we can physically comprehend that start because it could be said that actually the start is the is the end is the it's the eternal circle it's the uh oribus as they call it which is the snake the symbolic snake eating its own tail so that when we as a human being are formed when we when the spark of life enters us or when we're just a collection of small cells it's possible and again there's absolutely no scientific proof of this whatsoever but if we look at the the symbolic snake eating its tail which is has been present throughout many um, civilizations and through eons of history as, as, as a spiritual symbol, then it may be that as we are created, then we create a whole environment in which we live. It may be that this environment that I'm experiencing is only here for my experience and the environment that you're living is only there for your experience. You're carrying around your whole world with you and at the moment our two worlds are interconnected and we are sharing the information of our two worlds. When I die, it's possible that I, sure, I die and this whole world just collapses into nothingness. I don't believe that. I believe that part of me goes on into the other dimension. But do I believe a God? Is there a God? Well, in that case, 
then the God would be self, which is a terribly blasphemous thing to think in some senses. But it's possible that that is the case. We don't know for sure. Personally, I believe in an ultimate creator and I suspect that the ultimate creator ha has functioned somewhere in that kind of Oribus type way that it has died and been born at exactly the same time, but it has died and been born in many, many billions, billions of dimensions. Life after death to me is um, um, now, as far as I'm concerned, is a, is a foregone conclusion. And was it? 30 years ago? No, 30 years ago, I wouldn't have said that at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I grew up being dragged along to church every Sunday, to a C of E church, which I hated going to, um, purely because I was bored stupid uh, as a child. Those years, all those years ago, no, I would have, I didn't believe in life after death. I used to lie awake at night as a child thinking about what would it be like to be dead and trying to get my head round the fact that people die. And I was trying to understand it from the point of view of Jesus having risen from the dead and trying to figure out, well, how would that work? How, how much like being asleep is death? Um, you know, because that's the only frame of reference you've got when you're eight years old or something, you know? So, but as far as I was concerned, I've really only believed in life after death 100% um, in the last 100% in the last five years, um, and now I have no doubt whatsoever. And I, it causes me some um, concern or some conflict with some people because I um, uh, dying is a natural process as much as being born is a natural process. But our society, especially in the West, is all, when you get to that stage towards end of life, it is the focus of everything to keep that person alive. And actually I say, why? Because why keep that person alive? Because if they don't want to be kept alive, then why should they be kept alive? Because actually, if they want to move on and experience their life after death, as we say, because really there is no such word as death, it shouldn't be actually in the vocabulary, it should just be we pass on, we move on, we leave this realm, we leave this dimension, we move into another one, because I absolutely 100% believe that that is the case. And so why can we not just let people move on? and wish them well and celebrate their passing. The fact that, well, because we feel such pain that they have gone, that they have left us, they have abandoned us. That's why we hang on to them. And that's not, that's, you know, we just, that's just another negative emotion that we, we a attach. And of course it's the biggest one, grief is one of the biggest ones. And of course I feel sorry for any parent or brother or sister that's lost a loved one. I absolutely believe that you, when you die, you pass into the state, you pass into the, well, let's call it, let's call it heaven. Let's call it heaven. Why not? And I believe that there is a period where you, A, a you are adjust, you're allowed to adjust to the fact that you've, you're no longer in this dimension. And you also go through a, judge, a judgment, a self-review, but it's a self-review. You're allowed to reach your own conclusions. It's not a judgmental, you know, why it's a you are given the experience to reflect upon everything that you've done that is significant and therefore out of that reflective time and out of you know conversation if you like with with them in spirit those the management as dear old hamish would call them um, and i tend to use that term more generically than he did i term the management as even part of being spirit guides but in conversation with those that are wiser than we are, um, you make a decision. Well, do you want to come back again or not? Do you want to, you know, um, do you want to experience life slightly differently? Do you want to be, do you want to come back as a butterfly? Do you want to come back as a, you know, is there a lesson to be learned to come back as a dog this time around? You know, does it, and again, this time around, I mean, linear time, as we've already said, does not necessarily exist in the same way as linear time does down here. So <clears throat> we can be having all of these different lives in exactly, exactly the same time. Some people talk about enlightenment. 
what's your understanding of the term enlightenment? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I, there are some things that I'm really quite uh, lackadaisical about and laziness, a lazy approach to my schoolwork was always one of the things that was very, very evident in the report. Uh, could do better, could try harder. Um, uh, all of this stuff, and I'm afraid that even at 56 years old, I still have a tendency to be quite lazy in some of my thinking, right? So if somebody says to me, talk to me about enlightenment, I would actually probably say, really? Uh, enlighten, I mean, again, you see, I don't mean to be rude, but for me and for many people that are opening up to understand that actually life can be different to what they perceive it to be, right? Enlightenment, the goal of enlightenment, to be, a, to, be to find, I, I, I believe enlightenment to be, uh, to progress as far as you possibly can towards a spiritual well-being and uh, towards uh, emulating a spiritual being on this planet as possible, right? So it's kind of like um, you try and be your absolute best your, and to reach almost like a Buddha state, status, right? That's the way I see enlightenment. Now that might be wrong but that's the way I see it. But to me, I can't do that. I can't, I can't follow. I can follow that path as far as I can in my own environment. But you know what concerns me the most is actually helping people that are back further on the path, earlier on the path, that actually are not even aware yet that actually a lot of the chaos that's in their life is because they're not facing the right direction in terms of being in alignment with a lot of those emotional set points that they agreed to hit before they came down to this planet, right? And to me, the, if I can talk about spiritual stuff, and if it has to include spiritual enlightenment, then fine, but spiritual stuff, spiritual lifestyle in the most common sense grounded way possible, and therefore make it accessible to more and more people, then that to me is what I am interested in doing, not into attaining some kind of individual spiritual enlightenment for myself this time round. Maybe I'll have a go next time. Mm -hmm.